Thank you for coming to the Software is Easy, People are Hard panel. Um, how many of you believe that's true, that software is easy and people are hard? All right. You've worked with people and maybe software. So there we go. Uh, these are our panelists. Introduce everybody. You guys almost sat in the right order. That's amazing. Not that you've seen these slides. Um, almost. This is Steve Blackman of Apache Streams Project. This is Sharon Foga. Did I say that right? Yeah. All right. Apache OffBiz. She does a lot on ComDev. Helped with TAC one year when I was there. That's how we met. That was awesome. Rich Bowen, who you've probably seen a lot of already. He's famous. <laughs> exactly. He cut the cake. And Daniel Gruno, who's Mr. Infrastructure with all the other Mr. Infrastructures and Mrs. Infrastructures. Yeah. All right. So that's how that works. These are our panelists. I'm Benjamin Young. I'm Big Blue Hat on the Internet. Um, I'm in Apache CouchDB, and I'm incubating a project. This panel is important to me. I'm here to listen also. I'm just going to ask provocative questions and let these people solve my problems. And you guys get to listen in. Um, I've been in Apache for about six years. And incubating is brand new to me, so I have new questions. Um, one of the questions at Apache that gets asked a lot is who's in charge when everybody's in charge, right? Everybody gets a vote. How does this work? I'm going to just a quick overview of this, and then we've got the questions. Um, this is kind of how I perceive what happens. Sorry, panelists. Um, <laughs> the stuff's behind you. The Apache way versus something, right? The company or the BDFL or the, the Linux or whatever. And these are the words that are in my head, like community over code versus coercion, volunteerism versus command and control, top down, bottom up, stable, unstable. And an image that helped me when I was getting into Apache was this one about what it looks like to be a leader versus a boss or a manager. Um, the boss is on top, right? He's just calling the shots, and the people are doing what he wants them to do. And then in Apache, it's a little bit more like the leader thing, where you're just one of the guys pulling something, and you, people are following you because you're leading. That's the idea. So let's get to these scenarios. How do we survive in this environment, right? So scenario one. Um, I've got a GitHub-based project. I'm the BDFL. I really like my code. This is my project. And for whatever reason, I've thought, you know, community over code is promising. I, I get it. I've been to an Apache Con once. These are cool people. They know how to collaborate. Um, now I want to transition from just me to a bunch of other people. What are your insights, panelists, into how I give up my, like, dominance and share it with other people? And do you have any experience in that, personally? Go for it. Oh, you need a mic. I do have a mic. I have to do that, too. So transitioning from um, a, a single dictator to sharing leadership with the community can be difficult for reasons that aren't always immediately obvious. Because you know, if, if you're determined to give up control, the difficult part is having other people accept that responsibility. Mm. And, and so, you know, if people continue to look to you for leadership, um, you often have to refuse that. You have, to, you have to actively give the keys to someone else. And, you know, this can, this can happen as easily as um, someone asks a question and everybody looks to you for the answer and you pass the mic to, to Daniel to answer it, right? <laughs> you, you refuse to answer the question right. on which you're the authority you say, let's hear from someone else instead, and you refuse to answer it. But okay. um, yeah, that, to me, that, what I've observed is that that's the difficult part, getting, getting the community to actually step up, hmm. to, to recognize that they're allowed to. So you have to, you have to very actively allow them to step up. Hmm. Cool. Um, I think sort of following on from that, it's that if you've decided that you want to transition the, the project, then you're actually thinking that, hey, I can't do it by myself. I do need some help. And you understand that there's going to be some sort of process of adjustment. There's going to be something. And you, although you're the center of the knowledge, it's going to be hard for you to, to say no to answering things. You know, people are coming to you and you say, all oh, right, I do know the answer to that. But maybe I need to just wait a bit to see whether or not somebody else can help out. And that's the way you can sort of empower people to join, to show that you're open, to show that you're willing to accept and uh, learn from other people as well. 
I think this applies <clears throat> more generally to being a leader manager. Uh, people will often look to you to kind of help them understand what they should work on and why. So part of getting them to take over something is um, pointing them in the right direction and encouraging them to, to try that thing and to giving them good feedback when they're, when they're doing it well and then talking to them about what parts do you really want to be working on. Um, not all of those discussions will happen in, in a public forum. Sometimes you have to you know, kind of get in the mix and develop a more personal relationship and understand someone's um, aspirations in technology or business or, or whatever um, and kind of prod them in, in a direction that kind of makes sense. Um, and then if it's the right direction, then they'll thrive. That's awesome. Daniel, any thoughts on this one? A few. Sweet. There's also the, the aspect of giving up the direction of the project. If you're the, the, the leader of the project, the, the, the only one coding, you have in your mind a specific goal you want to set. Um, and when you give up the project, you also have to give up that goal because that is not what other people might see in your project. Mm. And if you keep setting, this is my goal, this is the goal of the project, then um, it's it's it, it's um, it it doesn't become a community project. It's still just your hobby project, and it doesn't have the legitimacy of, for example, an Apache project. If if it was um, personally, I had like I had a project called Pony Mail, which was just me for a while, and then some other people came in and say, hey, we want to help, and I was like, that's great. And the first two or three months was pretty much, well, not in public, but in, in private, it was just infighting because we had different goals. We all wanted the, the best for the project, but I had trouble giving up that this is not my project, it's a community project. Um, and I had to kind of just shut up at some point and let other people get their say and get their way because otherwise I won't get any contributors. And if I don't have contributors, then the project is at some point going to die um, because I realize I'm not a maintainer. We, we have uh, two different kinds of people maintaining or building code in Apache. We have the maintainers and we have the entrepreneurs that the entrepreneurs start up the code and then at some point they burn out or they give up. Um, and then you, if you don't have any maintainers, the project just dies. So the goal for me as an entrepreneur is to, at some point, shut up and give the, um, what do you call it, the, um, well, give the, the, the goal, the definition of goal to the maintainers because they're the ones that are going to maintain it for now and forever and not me. Mm -hmm. So even though I love, for example, Pony Mail, um, I can't be the one that decides this is what's going to happen in five years because I'm probably won't be, well, I will be developing it, but uh, I'm, I'm, if, if I lead it, I'll burn out, and then the project will die. So, <clears throat> sorry, uh, at a, a very early stage, you just have to not give up the project, but you have to give up the reins, and you have to shut up for a while, and let other people figure out what, what do I think about it, and what do they think about it, and I have, no idea where I'm going with this, uh, so I'll just hand the <laughs> mic over. <laughs> uh, the, the next scenario oh may help you out, or one of them will, for sure. Um, so what do you do when you've done this and you're starting to show your leadership and everyone else is wrong? Like, I've got this going, this is my baby, and I'm sharing it now, and I'm okay, and I'm trying to share it. I want, I want to do that, but everyone's just wrong, right? Like, they don't understand why we're here. How do you, how do, you do that? How do you, like grapple with that, and you don't want to be that person in the project, right? Well, you can probably want to start by recognizing that they might not all be wrong, that you might be the one who's wrong. That's a good start. <laughs> uh, if you're standing in a corner all by yourself, it might be because you're not thinking through it the same way that they are, and they're, even if they're newer, their take on what the project can and, you know, can and should be is just as valid as your own. 
I think that's an, uh, an inter interesting uh, comment as well. It's, I think it's about um, being able to see that other people's opinions are as valid as yours. Um, by saying that you know everybody else is wrong, it's effectively you're discounting everybody else's opinion. I mean, yes, you may be, you may have something, but if you can't portray or communicate that value that you can add yeah. to other people, then you might as well, you know, you're, you're, you're by yourself. You need, you're, you're there because you want to be part of the community. You want to work alongside other people. It's not about one person. It's about the community. So it's about understanding and respecting other people's opinions too. So maybe look, if people are telling you that you are wrong, okay, yeah, maybe where am I wrong? What do you see? Why do you think I'm wrong? Ask questions about it rather than making a, you know, oh, they think I'm, I'm, I'm right and, that, and, and they're wrong. So ask questions. Try and understand why people think that you're wrong and uh, get to the, the bottom of it. And I think once that dialogue's created, then you've got some common ground to find out, okay, maybe I need to think about something a bit differently. Maybe... The other people, once you, they started, you answered questions for them. They think, oh, actually, maybe, you know, hey, there is a bit of merit here. There's a bit of something interesting here. But maybe you just didn't communicate it the correct way. There's a number of scenarios in my various worlds right now that, that overlap around this particular question. Um, so... I work for a company that has grown from 4,000 people to 11,000 people in the last four years, which means that the old people are in the minority, right? So who's, who's right? Um, I work for the Apache Software Foundation, where we've grown from one project to 200 projects in the last 20 years. And so those of us that were there the first year are no longer in the majority, so who's right? And there, there comes a point and this, there's an internal discussion at Apache that's going on right now around the question of what are core values? Who gets to decide what are the core values? Is it the, uh, the people with gray in their beards? Or is it the majority who care passionately about this thing? And this is a conversation that will happen always in any group of people that grows beyond the original founder. So you have the choice to keep it just us in our little social club or open it up to the entire world and allow them to mold the direction. But you do need to determine what are your core non-negotiable values and, and stick to them. So, you know, if I were to pick a software project, the core values of the Apache HTTP server are that we adhere to the HTTP specification. That's not something we're ever going to negotiate away. Um, the core values of the Apache Software Foundation, well, that's a little bit more difficult to pin down. But it's something that you need to determine and document and stick to and, and be willing for that to be the hill to die on, not what color you paint the bike shed. And I'm going to go in a completely opposite direction and say if, if you don't want to be that person, you should lay on your back, be completely defenseless, and say, I am actually wrong. Let mm -hmm. the others be right for a, for a change. Because in a, in a systemic context, everyone you talk to, even though you disagree with them, they're right. And they have a reason to be right. You might not know it, but in their little uh, bubble, um, they are right. When they say they're right, it's because they have reason to believe that they are right. And you probably also have reason to believe you're right but you're being defenseless, or, sorry, you're being defensive because it's your project. So the, the goal of, for, for you, if you don't want to be that person, is to stop being so defensive about your project. Um, and it's, it's really easy to, to become defensive of your project when, when you build it from scratch and someone comes over and says, well, that doesn't work, or well, that is technically wrong. But in your mind, because you made all this, you know exactly why it's, it's right and not wrong. Um, you just can't explain it because there is, you know, actually you, you are wrong, but and the way you imagine the project in your head, everything is fine. And if someone comes and criticizes it, 
it's not the project, it's not the software they're criticizing, it's only you they're criticizing, or so you think. So you got to just lay on your back, belly up, and say, I'm sorry, you are right, I am wrong. If you can't do that, then you can't grow a community because it'll be your project and you will be the, the not even the beneficial dictator for life, you'll just be the dictator mm -hmm. if you can't lower your defenses. Um, and that took me personally a, a while to do. I hope I'm there now. Uh, <laughs> we still have some infighting, but uh, it's, it's getting better and we're getting, for, in my project, we're getting more contributors because I am just kind of saying, I don't want to deal with it, you deal with it. And then they eventually, the, the new people will deal with it because they do have an itch to scratch. Um, so they, they look to me first and if I just shut up, then eventually they will actually do it. Uh, have, uh, so I've learned. Um, so step back, lower your defenses, say the word sorry, I'm, I'm wrong or I might be wrong. Um, and that will, that will also give the, them confidence to contribute more because, hey, I got an idea and it didn't get shut down the first second I said it. So maybe I'm right, maybe I can contribute, maybe I'm actually good at this. Uh, it'll give them a, a boost. Um, yeah. Cool. Buffer.com. Um it's like a social sharing thing. They have these great articles on collaboration because they're all remote. And they talk about a no ego doer, which is like somebody who's not, basically what you described, not super self-defensive, but out there doing, contributing in some way. It's this combination of things. And I liked how like solid you said, like you just gotta do this and then there's room for other people to have an opinion. All right, let's see what's next. Great thoughts all. All right, dealing with that person. So it's not you. You've, you've taken Daniel's advice, and it's great advice. Um, but now there's this other person that's shown up, and, and they are an ego, non-doer, perhaps, and they're just throwing mud in your issue tracker and, and being that person. How do, you do, how do you deal with them? I mean, there's no really, like, maybe they have commit bid already, right? You can't just, like, punt them out. I, I have a good tool. It's called whiskey. <laughs> Oh, we can just go on to the next slide then, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's super difficult to answer that because you, you really, you have to, well, first of all, you have to have patience. Um, and you have to have a, I mean, code of conduct and all that plays aside. You have to have a place to vent also. And, and it shouldn't be the public mailing list, for God's sake. Um, <laughs> it's Apache is, is open, it's open development, it's open discussions. But you're allowed to have a small group where you say, oh my God, I really hate this person. And you should, <laughs> because if you don't vent privately, you're, you're going to vent publicly at some point. And that's not going to just affect you. It's going to affect the, the entire project. It's going to, some journalist is going to snoop it up and say, hey, this project's in trouble. And then you won't get contributors and then it goes downhill. So um, find a place to vent, find some scotch. And because you can, you can be a, a what I want to call a, a legal jerk. You can be, you can do something that is allowed, but it's not cool. But I can't kick you out. Like it's it's okay for me to yell at my neighbor. It's not cool that I do it. It's not, but it's not illegal. So I could do it, and he couldn't do anything about it. So there there will be situations in which we have no tools for dealing with people that are just in the right above the line. They are not people you can throw out, but they're also people you don't like. So find a, find a place to vent privately, get some scotch, and if they, if they break the code of conduct, it's, it's in, quite important to have a code of conduct, and we have that at Apache now, thanks to uh, Joe and us two years ago. We actually just, we just did it. We added a code of conduct. Um, but but it doesn't cover everything, and I have personally no way of dealing with. Um, see, there's a name I want to say, but I'm not going <laughs> to say it. Um, but you, yeah, the panelists know who I'm talking about. That kind of person. Um, 
I have no no quest no way to deal with the person. I have a way to deal with myself and my feelings for that person. So I'm gonna pass the mic on to someone who probably also has no idea. But uh. there's so many people you could have meant, <laughs> <laughs> and there's not enough scotch to really Wait. help that go. Okay. There's a, you know something that we say at Apache is that community is community over code. Community is more valuable than code. Um, and so, I mean, this, this is a very, it's a very difficult question because there's so many different scenarios in which this might apply because some people are actively destructive to the community and other people are just folks that you disagree with for reasons of ego or for reasons of technical direction or whatever. So um, there is a, uh, there's a presentation that was given by um, one of our one of our members. It's called "Dealing with Poisonous People." It's it's worthwhile watching. Um, I don't agree with everything that Fitz says in that, but uh, it's it's important to consider before it happens what you're going to do to poison do to do to people <laughs> um, do about poisonous people in your community. Um, as Daniel says, we have a code of conduct, but what's lacking from the code of conduct is the or else, um, the, the enforcement aspect of it. If somebody breaks the code of conduct, then what? And that's a very important thing to consider before it happens rather than trying to figure it out once it's happened. Um, my view is um, probably around um, looking at <laughs> separating the, the, the person from the behavior. So is it the person that you don't like or don't get on with, or is it the behavior that they're exhibiting within the community? So you, you might have the case where you get on with somebody quite socially, but on the mailing list, they're quite disruptive. So there, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's a separation there. Or you, you see, this is why it, I think it's a bit complicated. So <laughs> people are hard, yeah. So, I mean, if it's a behavior, I mean, people are adults as well and have the ability to modify or change their behavior. Maybe from a cultural perspective, they don't realize that it is an, an actually aggressive or negative or whatever behavior. And it may be that it's part of their culture to be maybe abrupt or da da da, whatever. Um, so, one way that um, you can deal with it is to have a private conversation with the person to understand, to see whether or not they realize that they're causing disruption in the community, because they might not realize it. I, uh, you know. And this is something that you can attempt, I think, and to see whether or not that p the person can be uh, given the feedback that they are causing some disruption. And if they can adjust that behavior, that's fine. If they don't believe they're, they're wrong or they don't, they, they, et cetera, then yes, it's gonna be quite difficult. And I think I agree when you say, well, with the, the code of conduct, there isn't an or else piece there. You can work through it and you've got somebody in the community and you just have to be uh, patient. And you also have to be not drawn, not, not be uh, pulled into uh, an emotional sort of battle, because that's what it becomes. It can escalate into like a, a war and a battle. So once you get into that stage, then it, it, it's like, you know, it can be really, really negative and destructive. So first of all, try and approach the person, try and understand the behavior. And if that doesn't work, then yes, you just need to be mature about it, really. Can I? Uh, just real quickly, I want to appeal to a higher authority. Um, uh, I'll quote scripture at you. If your brother offends you, approach him privately. And uh, so I'm, I'm quoting from, I'm misquoting from the, the letters of uh, Paul in the Bible. And he says, if your brother offends you, go talk to him privately, and that usually works. And if it doesn't, take two or three of your friends and talk to him again, and that usually works. And if it doesn't, then call this person out in front of the entire community. And if that doesn't work, then throw him out. So there you go. Uh, I don't have any specific experience with uh, community saboteur, I guess, which is kind of what we've been talking about here. Um, but to the theme of giving up control, right, I'll note that people that are coming into your project are bringing 
their own um, mindset and experience and preferences. Uh, and they're going to often find fault with how things currently are. And, you know, the, the proper response, I think, in those situations is, A, I'm really glad that you're interested in this. I'm really happy to, you know, to have you here trying to make things better. Yes, that thing that you said isn't good enough. You're right. It's not good enough, right? How about we talk about how to make it better? And then, you know, as a, as a person with a vote as to whether something gets accepted or not, just be very explicit about here are the criteria that I have for whatever we would replace it with, right? Here's the current thing does these things. The new thing should do those things too, as well or better. And then if that person wants to take the lead in making a larger change, you should be supportive of that 100%, even if it means swapping out the familiar for the unfamiliar. Very good. I just want to say two things to, to this. The first one is I'm going to quote the letter of Rich Bowen, um, <laughs> that there is much honor in the email not sent. Mm. If, if you have one of those people on the mailing list that just irks you and you have a really, really long rant about him or her, step away, save it as a draft, look at it the, the next day, and then hopefully you'll, you'll just delete it. Um, because we escalate, especially at Apache also, because we are, we, we are so committed to Apache that things escalate very, very quickly because we both believe that this is not the core value of Apache or this is the core value of Apache or this is uh, definitely a technical decision and you might say it's not. Uh, and because we're both so committed to the project, it escalates very quickly. So always take a step back look at your email, save it, but don't send it, and then look at it later when you cool down. Um, and that really helps a lot, or just delete the email that irks you. Um, and also, uh, what's the name, Jenna Likens? Yeah, uh, she does a, a great talk about something called DISCON. It's kind of like DEF CON, but for um, escalating uh, or escalations in, in, in the way that people talk to each other on the mailing list or in, 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 in real life. Um, and about how you can analyze and find out what sort of level are we on. Are we on DEF CON 1 or 2 or 3 or 4? And depending on what level you're on, how do we disengage and, and go to a lower level? How do we make people relax? Um, it's, I think it's on YouTube somewhere. Um, she, she's done that uh, quite a lot. So you should go check that out. Awesome. Thank you all. And in case you're not noticing, a lot of this is applicable outside of the Apache Foundation. Um, have, a, have a sent mail or a drafts thing full of all your angsty emails. And then you just go I delete them two of those occasionally. just today. <laughs> yeah, really? It's cathartic, if nothing else, right? All right, next up. No one else cares. So I'm here, I'm working on this project, and maybe there were other people at one point, and everybody was excited, and then they left the room, you know, digitally. And, and now I'm trying to get more people in, or maybe it's my incubating project, and I'm looking at you, Steve, and you've been banging and banging and banging at this thing, and nobody's showing up, and come on, please, please. I've been six months in an incubator project trying to drag people in. So, so where do you do that? How do you incentivize volunteerism um, how do you get people to care, at either as much as you do, or ideally, to Daniel's earlier stuff, more than you do? Well, I have the mic, so... Um, <laughs> sometimes um, you have to... Well, so Daniel already, already gave a, a concrete example of this. You step back and you see what happens. Hmm. Um, and, and when you do that, you might somewhere in your mind have to be willing to accept the fact that nobody does care, that this is a project that only matters to you. And, you know, that's okay, but some projects don't, don't become what you wish them to be. But very frequently, when you step back from something and it starts to, uh, to uh, fall into disrepair, the people that do rely on it step up and make it happen. And this organization is a result of just such a situation. There was a web server project 
It's called the NCSA web server. The person that worked on it um, got a job and quit working on it. And it laid abandoned for six months. And then some people that realized that it was abandoned stepped up and started working on it. And here we are today. I'll say something. Um, I think uh, when you when you look at projects, I mean, we, we have the, the the various mailing lists. So we have the, the the dev mailing list. We have the user mailing list, and a lot of the ac activity around the project tends to happen around the, on the dev list because it's you know creating releases, etc. So I would say you know look at the user list. I mean, maybe I'm linking into <laughs> the the talk that uh, that Steve did. Um, Look at the user list because the, your user base, your, your the project is creating something. People are downloading and using that. You know, it's a those are the the people that maybe maybe will, will be interested in doing something in contributing because they're using it already. They're already uh, customers. They're already clients. And if there is the possibility that hey, you know, we're not, no longer going to be able to have this, we're not, no longer be able to maintain this or, or do this. And actually, well, we're getting value out of it. Maybe it's time for us to step up and do something. So I would say maybe sort of reach out and look at the, the, the user base because that is, a, I think, a really wa a wide net uh, where you can capture uh, potential people that would be interested in, in, in doing something for your project. So uh, the reality is, in a lot of in a lot of circumstances, just because you build it doesn't mean they're going to come, right? Uh, and so what, what I've learned is that you have to be you have to be a recruiter. Like you have to identify the people that you think will be interested. You have to reach out to them, and you have to sell. You got to convince them. Here's why this is exciting. Here's why it's important. Here's where it's going. Here's how you specifically can come make it better, and uh, fortunately, you know, there's a, there's an imprimatur to being associated with Apache. Um, I think we, those of us who are in it deeply, don't you know think about that as much, um, but that can be a strong motivating factor to people who aren't part of Apache. Here's a chance for you to you know work with people who have a lot of experience in software and in open source and. You know, my team is looking for people like you to come in and be a part of it. Uh, so don't be afraid to um, sell all the valuable learnings and you know career credentials that that are that can be potentially achieved if they do a good job and work hard. Um, and you have to understand what those individuals are motivated by, and uh, encourage them to participate in a way that is going to be both interesting to them and fulfilling for them over the longer term if things go well. Great thoughts. Yeah. An yeah. An another comment uh, I want to make, because uh, I was at a, a conference and somebody came up to me and they said, hey, um, one of the things that I really admire about Apache is that you have the attic in the sense that if it's time for a pro to retire a project, that there is a place where the code goes, all the information goes, and if somebody at a later date wants to pick that up, they can do. And that was a, an amazing thing that I, you know, hey, somebody, somebody's happy that we've got the attic. And it seems a bit strange, but, you know, listening, it, 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 it's, it's part of what Apache is. It's part of, you know, there's a cycle of projects. That not everything is going to last forever. We want things to last forever. We build an environment for things to try and endure but some of the projects are not going to make it. So let's make sure, you know, we've got a place for that. And we've, got, we've put in a provision for if anybody wants to come along in the future, pick that up and get it moving again, then they can do. One other comment. Um, oh, and there's a, Henry had a comment about the, the attic, I guess. Um, so something I wanted to share was there was a study recently around socialness and what makes you successful being social. And as an introvert who likes to hide at the back of the room, I, I, I was kind of reading this. 
And it said there were two things. One was be where the traffic is. Um, so if you're at a bar, if you're at a party wanting to be social, be by the keg, be by the drinks, don't be in a corner. Uh, and the second one was listen. Don't be, a, don't be a talker who's telling everyone everything and pushing his opinion out. Um, be someone who's listening. And I think this actually works really well in this case is, as an open source project, we tend to make the project and we think the place where the conversation should be is with us on the project. But that's not where your traffic is. Your traffic is not yet with you. So when you've got a user list, your traffic starts being the user list. But before then, where are your potential contributors? They're not even with you yet. So you've got to get on Twitter. You've got to go to conferences. You've got to tell people about what the thing is you've got. But I just want to argue a little on the selling side is I think you don't need to sell. I think you need to ask people what do they want to do with it. And then you just sit and listen. Because that turns them into an owner and a member of your project rather than into a customer. And so those are my two ones, like traffic and listening. So the other thing I wanted to say is that uh, you need to preach the message that software projects are not just source code, that uh, other places where people can contribute are not, um, that are, they're at least as important as the source code and often more important. Um, Encouraging people to contribute to documentation is often the, uh, the gateway to them eventually contributing to the source code, but maybe they'll just contribute to documentation, and that's, that's what I do. That's what I've always done at Apache. Um, marketing, helping you get the message out, that's something that people can contribute to without a degree in computer science. Um, design is something that every single project at Apache desperately needs. If, if you know how to design anything from a on-screen widget to a website to stickers to uh, physical goods, every Apache project desperately needs your help. And uh, so, again, just, just the message that source code is, is only a fraction of a software project. Uh, my answer here would be fake internet points. And by that I mean, the, usually when you have a project and it's not going that well, you think, oh, I've got no users. You're just not looking in the right place. Hmm. You're not looking where the contributors are because, again, they don't have, you don't have fake internet points to give out. If you go to a place like Stack Overflow, this is, I'm stealing Rich's uh, thoughts here. Um, we have we always have issues on the web, Apache web server with uh, people not showing up to write documentation or helping out answering questions. And we're like, well, where are they? Why don't anyone care about the documentation? They do. There are thousands of people out there that are bursting to come and help us with documentation. They just don't know where to go. So they go to Stack Overflow and they get their fake internet points and they answer, sometimes they give the wrong answer, sometimes they give the right answer, but they want to help. And we just suck at finding them and bringing them back in. So we, uh, the thought I had this morning was at Apache, we should kind of get some sort of fake feather points or whatever, <laughs> uh, karma. Feathers in your cat. Maybe. That is cross community so we could track how well people contribute to Apache projects and then maybe make them commit or if they get 1,000 points or something like that. Um, because it kind of matters to people that they have a stat that says, I am helping out. And they might not be a committer yet, but it's even though it's fake, it's real. And I really think that we should sort of, in, in a way, do that at Apache um, and in the individual projects to give some recognition that it isn't just committership, but is something that everyone can have without having to spend days on end committing patches to, um, to the project. It's a great idea. And then we like, can like apply the, uh, magic sauce. Like the Fedora badges program. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Awesome. We have one more scenario, and then a final call to action, and then a question. So this is our last scenario. I'm trapped in my own project. I've been doing this forever. How do I get out? <laughs> Daniel gets the mic immediately. How do I get out? Like, I'm done. I've got other things I want to work on. Maybe it's another Apache project. Well, I just want to say whiskey again. That's, that's <laughs> how I get by. Um, 
I I don't I I I have this scenario in my head for a few projects, um, and I have no answer actually. Um, so I'm, I'm going to give the mic away, and please help. You want the answers, right? Yeah. If anyone wants to help produce the next Apache Con, um, I'm in this scenario, <laughs> and uh, no, seriously. Um, I think that this is close to related to some of the other questions that have been asked, and uh, you know, you just you you just have to step back, give other people permission, and allow them to make you know what you would call mistakes without correcting them. And uh, I've I've seen Daniel do this on on the Pony Mail project. Um, I've seen uh, Brian Bellendorf and Roy Fielding do that on the Apache Web Server project, and you can tell that they're just itching to tell you you're wrong, but they, they have the self-control not to. And that's incredibly difficult when you know you're right and you know they're wrong. <laughs> but uh, so, it's, so it's closer related to the, yeah. the former question. Yeah, I think it's a, it, it's a hard scenario because I think as projects sort of develop, you get people that are seen as the experts in particular areas. And so the rest of the community is like, oh, right, okay, if it's anything to do with documentation, oh, I'll contact Rich. If it's anything to do with such, oh, I'll contact Steve. So you've already got a reputation as being the, the, the person to, to go to. Um, and also that knowledge expert. So if it, that anything comes up around uh, your specialization, people expect you to step in. They're waiting for you to step in. And, you know, when you, when you don't step in, there's an, hey, did you not see that post? Uh, uh, hey, did you not do that? Uh, you know. um, yeah, I did see it, but I was, I think it's time for somebody else to, you know, so it's, it's hard. Um, and I think the, the, the dilemma is that you, may, you think that the project might suffer a little. And because you're committed to a project, you don't want the, pos the, the project to suffer, you don't want the community to suffer, and so it's, you're in a, in a, between a rock and a hard place, really, but you need to make the community develop on its own. The community is a living entity, it's a thing that, that grows, and it needs to, to evolve, and you're not gonna be there all the time, you know, not, you're not gonna be there forever, so that you know that the natural cycle is that somebody or, or some people need to uh, take over that to, to be able to uh, develop into the next generation, you could call it, as well. So, yeah. It sounds like the earlier you start, the happier you'll be later. There, there's actually kind of a counterintuitive thing about community. The, the more that you, as a founder of a community, help, mm. the less of a community you have. Mm. So you you got to do the, the right thing, which is the wrong thing in your head, is... Don't, don't develop the project because the more that we develop as a founder, as a sole programmer, the more I help, the less the community will grow because there is no need for the community to grow because I'm, I'm doing all this stuff still. So why do, why do, why do switch, switch need to submit a patch if I'm doing all the work? Um, so you need to do the, the thing and, and, and not develop your project if you want to develop the community and then the community will hopefully make some code or documentation or, or whatever. But it seems counterintuitive too that you gotta do the thing that you really don't wanna do. Um. One of the founders of the Apache community, Stefano Mazzocchi, um, wrote an amazing document what, 15 years in that, it's for 15 years ago now, where he says the, the best way to develop a vibrant community in, this, in software, a software community, is to have an, imp an imperfect idea and terrible code. Because if you have a complete idea of what the final product has to be and you've written all the code, what is there for anyone else to do? And uh, so, yeah, I recommend finding his, his original blog post because it says it a lot better than I did. I don't know if it's just me, but it seems like this problem is way worse at my day job than it is <laughs> at Apache. Uh, I, you know, I, I think the answer though is kind of similar. Like if, if you're on the hook to do something and it needs to get done and you feel you need to devote your energies elsewhere, <clears throat> the only way you're getting across that transition is to identify and encourage and train a replacement. 
Um, and as it happens, you know, it's great if there's a horde of people on your list, like looking for something to do. Um, but then it, it's been a long time since I worked for a company where we had people sitting around not busy that I could just <laughs> um, motivate with uh, by telling them it was their job. Um, but the difference in the volunteer side is you have to actually motivate them to think that it's important to, to step up and do that. Um, it's not enough to, like it might be at a, at a job to just tell them it's their job. Yeah, cool. Okay, one last thing, guys. Last piece of advice to achieve community over code. Is there anything that we haven't covered that you could tell somebody you're trying to build a community, it's more important to you because you've listened really well for the last 40 minutes, than your code is? What would each of you say, do this and you'll be fine? Ish. I'm going to go last. <laughs> I would say um, be open in, in, in understanding that uh, the community over code concept is, is sort of internalized different, differently to, by everyone. You know, your interpretation of community over code may not be the same as somebody else's. And even though we have, you know, all this documentation and this thing about, you know, how we do it, how we describe it, it might be slightly different. And just to be aware of that and to not get into the battle of, um, you know, I'm right and you're not, and you're wrong. That like, the previous scenario, but just to say, hey, you know, um, we've got different opinions about how we do this, but the community is the thing that we both care about. We have this common goal, and that's all that matters. My answer would be to give permission, um, and and you know there's there's the technical side of it where if you're a software project you should hand out commit rights like candy because this is why you have revision control if somebody screws up the code you revert it right so there is no risk in giving someone commit bit early there's no such thing as as giving them commit bits too early because you can revert changes um, and then on the social side give people permission say, um, I, you know, you have great ideas too, please come implement them. Um, ask people, please come and help us. Don't assume that they're just gonna show up, but, but go pursue them and say, you have permission to, to do this thing. I just wanna add that, that it might be true for subversion, it's not as true for Git, because you can just <laughs> override the repo. <laughs> Um, I just want to say, give it time and, and don't look at how well other projects are doing. You can look at how they're doing it, but don't look at, at a project and say, oh, this is really, really going along. Why, isn't it, why is my project not uh, growing the community as fast? Because uh, especially in, in the incubator, we have uh, 59 projects at the moment, and some are huge, some are popular, some have companies backing them, and then there are some that are small, Tiny was just one or two developers that had an idea, and that is just uh, that's just life. And maybe your project will die, maybe it will flourish. But you're not IBM, so stop pretending you're. I, I'm not calling IBM out. I'm just saying I'm not IBM. So uh, so stop pretending you're as big a project and look at what they're doing, but not. Don't, don't get sad because you're not a, a big project. Give it some time. And again, if, if your project dies, then so be it. You'll make a new one. And yeah. All right, Steve. <laughs> make it good. Well, the question was framed of what's the one thing you can do to achieve this um, ideal that is the purpose of, of the foundation? <laughs> so I don't, I don't have an answer to Two that minutes. specific question. Um, but I'll, the one thing I would say is if you wanna just be going in the right direction and not um, maybe falling backwards, then just in, in every interaction that you have with um, the people that are on the project or that are otherwise affiliated or interested in it, uh, try not to be the people we were just talking about before. <laughs> so ask yourself regularly in, in this situation, if I push back on this proposal, am I being that guy or am I acting like a, 
BDFL and what kind of impact is that gonna, what message might that be sending to people on the other side? So in, in all those interactions, try to always um, be open and to you know, try to check your own sense of you know, preference for specific direction or your own you know, sense of wanting to not, not, not let it get messed up, right? Because it's gonna get messed up sometimes. That's part of the process, like we were just saying. Something can get worse before it gets better and often does. So just embrace that part of, of the journey. Awesome. So we're gonna end with maybe two questions and then we're gonna wrap if there are two questions. I mean, I feel like they solved it all, so. <laughs> cool, well thank you everybody for coming. I think lunch is next, so. <laughs> <laughs>